Hello everyone and welcome back to Ruby Lessons and Code Academy. So today we're going to we're going to be doing a project. I might split this up into two parts, I might not, depending on the time. But let's get started. So we will be making a project that will help so uh, this will help you create a small program that will read the user's input and correct his or her capitalization. Capitalization is uppercase or lowercase, just for a reminder. Users can provide an almost infinite range of input, so it makes our lives easier as programmers to make their input standard before doing anything with it. So as I mentioned during uh, two lessons ago when we were talking about strings, when you get an input, it can be, if you, when you're getting a string input specifically, it can be all mixed with uppercase and lowercase, but if you're comparing it to something, it's always better to just have to do one comparison than six comparisons. For example, if you have yes, every letter can be uppercase and uh, there are loads of combinations in which they can be made. But if you convert their imp the user's input all into lowercase, you can just make one comparison just to lowercase yes, and it's going to work perfectly. So instructions, check out the code in the editor. We've added some new things that we'll be teaching you. Can you guess what it does? Click 7 submit code to find out. So answer each question and hit enter return on some keywords. So what's your first name? First name equals get chomp. Uh, first name dot capitalize. Uh, with an exclamation mark at the end. Interesting. Okay, 7 submit code. What's your first name? Okay, last name. Uh, well, I'm not gonna answer everything, um, because this is going on a YouTube video. What say to problems are you from? You can, you can answer these as long as you're not recording them. I wouldn't recommend putting the, your location on a YouTube video, just saying. Um, and yeah. So, what's your first name that took our input? First name equals gets.chomp. Gets.chomp gets our input, and then it uh, capitalizes it. We'll see what that means later on. What city are you from? Capitalize. What, what capitalize probably does is just capitalizes the first letter of each word and then makes every other letter lowercase. So let's find out in this project. Prompting the user, so gets chomp, is the first thing that we're going to be working on. First, let's write the code we've already been familiar with. In order to get input from the user, we'll first need to print a prompt on the screen. Because if you don't print a prompt and then the console just stops and asks for an input, it looks weird because the user doesn't know what's happening. You should always tell the user what's happening and why you're waiting for something. For, so, for example, we can have print what's your first name? And I mispunctuated it. There we go. So submit code. Now, we still aren't getting anybody's input, we just prompted them to enter something, but they can't actually enter anything. Getting input then. Good, n let's try something new now. You may have noticed this weird little line of code repeated in our example. So variable name equals gets dot chomp. Gets is a Ruby method that gets input from the user. When getting input, Ruby automatically adds a blank line or new line or the sla backward slash n character, as I like to use it, after each bit of input. Chomp removes that extra line. So your program will work fine without chomp, but you'll get extra blank lines everywhere. So I will explain what that means after I do the instructions. Uh, declare a variable first name and set it equal to gets.chomp. So first name equals gets dot chomp seven submit code so okay let's explain what chomp does more clearly as you can see now this is in one line and so is my input so where i'm writing it in the same line as the print if i remove the dot chomp once i run it well didn't explain it like that but uh, as you can see, it's uh, below there. So as you can see, there's a new line character at the end of the string. And we don't want the string to have a new line character at the end because we want the input to be purely what the user has entered. So that's what where chomp comes in. So when we do dot chomp, 
as you can see, it's just what we have entered in there. There is no new line character at the end. And that is what we want. So let's move on as we have been with Chomp. Repeat for more input. Well, right now we need to repeat what we've done for last name, city, and state. And so instructions add print prompts, variables, and get chomps for the user's last name, city, and state slash province. Use last name as the variable for the user's last name, city, for city, blah blah blah. Hint prompt the user to provide an abbreviation for their state or province, such as new NY for New York. This will naturally lead us to use dot upcase letters. So, okay, fair enough. So basically what we want to do now is just copy this and paste it over and over. So we have, so first name, we have last name. And here last name as well. Then we have city. Your city's name. And I guess we just need to use city there. And then we have state, your state's name. I'm just going to go with that. Then let's submit. Let's just go with that. Most quick way of doing it. And that is fine. So basically we just repeated the question over and over for everything separately. Moving on. Printing the output. As you might have noticed, Ruby is not really returning any feedback to us. Well, it is, but it's not supposed to be. Uh, we want to be able to see our string formatting in action. So we're just taking these names in, but we aren't actually seeing what they look like or what we're actually taking in. We're not sure. We just know that the computer has them in memory, but we can't. We haven't used them yet. So why bother doing it? This is why. So for this, we'll need one more new piece of syntax. If you define variable monkey that's equal to the string curious George, just this uh, capitalization, and then you have a string that says I took pound monkey to the zoo, Ruby will do something called string interpolation. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I know what it means, and replace the pound monkey bit with the value of monkey. So that is, it will print I took curious George to the zoo. Even though what we actually wrote in code is I took pound monkey to the zoo, uh, where monkey is in curly braces. We can do the same thing here. So for example, first name equals Kevin, and then we can put, or similar to print as we have learned in the first few lessons, your name is pound first name in curly braces. And that's going to print your name is Kevin. Instructions. Let's use this syntax to print out the values of first name, last name, city, and state using the pound curly braces syntax. So uh, I just remembered state's name is that uh, abbreviated states. Uh, I think that's what it asked us to do. Uh, just while I remember, it's not that important because it's just an example anyway. Uh, so let's print these, we will print them after each line, so puts, and then we have something as a string, your name, well let's do your first name, is, and then we will have the syntax, oops, not tilde, and not square brackets either, I'll just copy this over every time, and instead of your first name, we'll put your state's name, your city's name, and that is not how you spell city, there we go, and your last name. Now we can just use last name here, in between the braces, first name in between the braces, city in between the braces, and state in between the braces. If we save and submit, what is your first name? Let's do ACDF normal as everyone. Um, what is your last name? FDSA. Good. Let's do ZXCV. That's a rare one. And that. There we go. As you can see, after each line, after we've been asked on each line to enter for input, we also get output for what we have entered. 
that can sometimes be useful. So start next lesson. Formatting with string methods. Right now we've got our output, but as you can see, we haven't used string methods to properly capitalize everything. Meaning, uh, our, the first name they have entered, even though they've entered it in all smaller case, we actually wanted to have the first letter as uppercase because it looks much better and it's the way it's supposed to be. So let's fix that. So we have a code like this. Print this is my question. It, it literally prints this is my question. Answer equals gets.chomp. So we get input that has the new line character chopped off at the end. Answer to answer.capitalize. So the new thing that we're talking about. And then we have answer.capitalize exclamation mark. Let's see what these do. First, we introdu introduce one new method, capitalize here. It capitalizes the first letter of a string and makes the rest of the letters lowercase. We send the result to answer to. So this does what we want to do to name, city, and last name. We don't really want to do it for state because that's going to be abbreviated. We're all going to make it upcase there. The next line, so second line, might look a little strange. We don't assign the result of capitalize to a variable. Oh, actually, I think it's talking about this one. Uh, instead, you might notice the exclamation mark at the end of capitalize. This modifies the value contained within the variable answer to itself. The next time you use the variable answer, you will get the result of answer.capitalize. So if you do this, you don't actually have to set answer to be equal to answer exclamation mark capitalize because you wouldn't be able to do that. That would probably give you an error. If you wanted to capitalize, so the method is capitalize. If you wanted to do it to the string that you're talking about, you put an exclamation mark at the end. I don't know whether that's how it works for uh, app case as well, but we can test it. Why not? After each variable assignment, first name, last name, city and capitalize method. So for state use the upcase method. What? It doesn't really state what we're supposed to do, but I'm guessing we need to capitalize all of them. So let's do first name. Oops. Dot capitalize. Capitalize. American spelling of it. I think it's American spelling because in English it's normally with an S. Last name. Although Z makes much more sense because it sounds more like a Z. But oh well. I'm not the one who is good at English. <laughs> and we have city. And then we have state. And we don't actually want to use capitalize, we want to use upcase here. And as you can see, we can actually use the exclamation mark uh, thing that we just learned on upcase as well, which means we can use it on downcase, capitalize, uh, what else have we learned? Oh, uh, reverse, instead of having to type out a line like this. Although a line like that might sometimes make more sense. It depends on how you want to use it. But in this case, I think that this also makes quite a bit of sense. So we'll probably be using it depending on what I think of first. What is your first name? ASDF. All lowercase, let's see what happens. Okay, actually, I probably want to change the order of these two lines, seeing as this would make more sense. Oops. So that we actually get the correct output. Let's test that again. Uh, okay, don't care about that. Okay, seven submit code. So ASDF, all lowercase, as you can see, our output, now, after we have capitalized it, is that the A at the start is a capital letter. What is your last name? The F should now be a capital letter. As you can see, it is. What is your city's name? QWERTY, why not? Oh, I, did, I missed out the W. Oh well. But as you can see, now it's all... Uh, the Q is uppercase. Now let's do NY in that order. I mean, in that, with that capitalization, all of it should become uppercase. And it does. Which is perfect for us, because that is exactly what we were asking for. So let's move on to the last section, which is probably just look at your code. 
Perfect, in just a few short steps you've created your own Ruby program with real world applications. Feel free to add to your program or change it as much as you like. So I think that this is quite a good representation of how you would get input for some information. For like, for example, a form on a website would probably use something like this to get your information. Facebook to make an account, again, something similar like this. Maybe for the password, it's probably not going to have a line like this because you don't really want to change the input for the password as you want it to have as much variation as possible and the user needs to know that because that makes a more secure password. But for the first name, last name, email, it's, the input doesn't matter. So what they probably do is something like uh, get him. So let's do chomp. Have home my input equals gets dot chomp. Uh, let's put a line here that says print. What's your input? Simply. And then we would compare my input to a string which I'm expecting to get. Uh, no, I would compare something with... So, okay, we haven't actually gone into depth too much now, but if you know this, that's good. I will just explain it a bit more. So we have... Uh, is it true? Well, I'm not going to put a uppercase there. Is it true equals that equals um, what do we have my input dot down case. So basically what this does is compares whatever I enter into my input. So what I, I whatever I get as input here makes it lowercase and compares it to the lowercase of the thing that I'm expecting to get. So whatever this is, it doesn't matter how it's capitalized. If it equals to this, then I would be granted access, for example. If it's my username, it, uh, it doesn't matter how I capitalize my username. Anybody can find out my username. So that's why you would be comparing it to a lowercase or you could do it to an upcase. So upcase and then you can have all upcase there and compare it to that. So if this doesn't make sense, don't worry too much. If it does, then good, you are probably uh, ahead of where we are right now. And this is a boolean in this case, or a true or false value, just to say that. And this is a comparison sign. Okay, so enough of more complicated stuff, we will get onto this in uh, later lessons. But until then, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I will, uh, I will answer them as soon as possible. Like this video if you liked it. Share it if you liked it as well. Dislike if you disliked it. So that, and tell me how I can improve for next time. But until that next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.